<clears throat> All right, we need to talk. And here's the bottom thing. I'm going to live stream the commissioner slash president of the SSA and his state of the agency address. What is this? It is about the current state of the SSA. It is about future changes that he wants to go ahead and do. It is his top priority list about the SSA going through 2024 into 2025 by Commissioner Martin O'Malley, the official president of the SSA, the Social Security Administration. Let's get into it. Let's begin. Here is the intro for what the president of the SSA intends to do going through the next couple of years. Now, before we go into it, please remember to like and subscribe. But also, I have to do a warning. Some of you may be offended by the egregiously terrible music that they play at the beginning of this and the end of it. I need you to understand that as you listen to this music and cringe with such horrified feelings in your heart, I just want you to understand that's going to be okay. They only play it for a short period of time. And even though you are not in this moment in an elevator feeling like that's the only place it should ever be done, we will make it through it. Let us begin. Welcome to SSA Talks. Our agency's new commissioner, Martin J. O'Malley, was sworn in on December 20th, 2023. Since then, he's been very busy meeting with top officials and regional employees about the direction of Social Security going forward. In this episode, Commissioner O'Malley discusses his top priorities with host Jeffrey Buckner, our acting deputy commissioner for communications. Welcome, everybody, to our most recent episode of SSA Talks. I'm joined today by Commissioner Martin O'Malley. Commissioner, welcome. Jeff, thank you. Good to be with you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, this is your first uh, episode of SSA. Okay, so this is my first complaint right off the bat. You could just skip all that crap. Literally just, just skip it all. They paid somebody to come up with that intro. Why would you do that? And then the intro person wasn't the person introducing the commissioner. They had to get another person to do that. What would you like? Do you not realize how the, the attention span works of me? Like, it's just me. Think of me. Like, let's just let's focus on what I would need from the. All right, here we go. Box, and you have been traveling out and about. And I know that Social Security is near and dear to you, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk to America about what it means for you to be Commissioner of Social Security. Well, Jeff, thank you. I, th I think, you know, the, I know this podcast is called SSA Talks. For me, it's about SSA Listens, and that's what oh. I have to do as Commissioner. Now, I haven't heard this thing yet. I heard the intro, and I was like, I'll just do a video on it, and it'll just magically work out. I haven't heard that. But that, that right there was a good move. SSA listens. Oh, 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 oh. that was a good move. This guy has presidential stuff written in his back pocket. That was a good move. That was smooth. This man has Social Security Riz right here. All right, hold on. Is to listen and to learn and to care enough to do something about both Good. the things that our customers tell me and also very importantly, which is why I barnstormed all of the regions of the country, even in the winter in my first 30 days, because I need to hear from employees on the front lines. So uh, this is uh, this is an ongoing process of listening, learning and doing. And that's what I'm engaged in. And I'm enjoying it every single day. I mean, to be able to work with the men and women of this agency on work that is uh, uh, so important to the lives of so many people across our country. You know, as a Catholic, I told somebody for me, it's like corporal works of mercy. All right. So right there, a couple of details that I noticed. First off, amazing intro. That that was an amazing intro. Here's the deal. He used Barnstorm. Now, I'm a country boy. You know, I grew up on a farm. I did crap work all the time. I have to be up there in a couple of weeks to weed whack and all that jazz. But here's what I want to point out from this real quick. Um, the whole intro was about not his ego. It was about getting other people to tell him what the fix can be so that he can fix it and work with them. Uh, he just stated Catholic, which I was kind of surprised from a presidential standpoint. Normally presidents will talk about their religion to get that vote. 
So I think that's a step towards his role as a future president, uh, but you know, of the of the United States of America. But normally you don't hear commissioners talking about specifically religion. So now I'm thinking in my brain that this is not scripted. He might have had the questions ahead of time, but I feel like that might have been a slip almost because you don't expect commissioners to talk about their particular religion. I don't know what he's going to say about the religion, but that when he said Catholic, I was like, whoa, that's not the norm. Let's see what he has to say. At a grand scale of the nation uh, that people have already earned and already paid for. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about, uh, about the, the year ahead and uh, wide awake and, and eyes wide open about the challenges we face. And Commissioner, you are a servant leader. I've heard you use this term here uh, throughout the agency. I pay attention. <laughs> and uh, do you mind taking a few moments if you could share your experience as mayor of Baltimore, governor of Maryland, and how that has prepared you for this position as commissioner and leading an enormous workforce. And as you said, our mission is to serve America. How has that helped prepare you for this? I suppose we all become the products of the people and that we have uh, known and that we've loved. And I'm certainly the product of the people who, who I've known and loved in the city of Baltimore through all of their uh, triumphs and joys and through their, their pains and their losses. And um, I have had the, you know, I've probably attended I've, I've probably attended more AME and Baptist services during my years as mayor than I did at uh, Catholic services, <laughs> although I go every Sunday. And this concept. Yeah, this is this is super unscripted. We don't usually get this. This is like real honesty. This is like, honestly, this is almost Trump style right here. This is almost like a Donald Trump style where he's just talking country-esque and basically explain because you would never hear religious stuff normally from the social security commissioner. So they probably gave him the questions and this is completely unscripted. They might've given him bullet points, but I don't even know if he's sticking to them. So let's keep rolling through this. This is good. This we're, we're actually getting a real human response, which normally that's not what we get during these SSA talk things. We get like predefined pre created. It's like they, you know, they just took samples of the commissioner's voice, put it into an AI program and boop, there you go. This is not that this is, he's winging this servant leader to be among and with, not to lord over, not to be on top of some ivory tower barking orders from the top of a triangle or pyramid of command and control, to be among and with. Uh, Taylor Branch, who had written the book of, uh, uh, called Parting the Waters back, I don't know, it's probably 20 years ago now, all about Dr. King and and civil rights, he said to me when I happened to come across him when I was running for mayor, he said, um, don't ever separate yourself from, from the challenges and the sufferings that, of the people that you're serving because your most important work is not, you know, the, the work of, you know, your genius or your <laughs> operational tricks. It's really to be among and to be with. Uh, transformations, if you will, of the heart, not, not to be trite or, or too metaphysical about it, but you really can't expect to lead people to a better place. If you know, it's, as, I, as I listen to him, I don't hear, like, this is like a president talking, you know, this is almost like a, a peanut farmer-esque, you know what I mean, kind of like approach, you know, that relaxed, common how are we going to fix this approach, which I think is good for a United States president role, but it's confusing my mind. Like I'm sitting here being like, why is he telling me this story? What's he going to do? What are his priorities? So my brain is like, you know, and I, I, he's telling me that the categorical way of approaching these fixes, but my brain is honestly thinking like, this seems very religious. It also seems not very bullet pointed strategically out it also just feels like he hasn't warmed up yet do you guys feel that where it just feels like he he hasn't warmed up yet he's like getting there let's all right let's keep rolling out among and with the people you're leading and feeling their pain feeling in the case of ssa 
their disappointment, their exhaustion, their overwork, their underappreciation, their sense that people in headquarters don't listen. And when they send us new systems, they make our lives and our jobs harder to do for the people that we serve. Um, so to be a servant leader is to acknowledge that, to own it, and to do what you can to, to address it and to fix it every day. Thank you, Commissioner. So, you know, what's interesting is that in some of these areas, you know, you have these new, uh, you know, basically mayors, governors, et cetera, who are the opposite of servant leaders, right? They're, they're getting literally sued for, you know, spending a million dollars on lavish, you know, flights here, drives there, meals here, meals there. And his, what he's saying is like the exact opposite of that. You know, he has this feel that like he just got out of Kentucky Fried Chicken after a long day of working at the SSA, as opposed to some of these other, you know, mayors and and uh, governors who are like, well, we just finished eating at the most expensive restaurant. We're not going to take a flight to Florida where they don't have the same rules that restrict us from partying. And then we'll go back to our state and behave. This is very different than that. Going back to why we're here, serving America the challenges that they face, and you talked about the challenges that our own employees face. Would you share with us your top priorities for our listeners? Okay, yeah, cool. Sure. Here I we think go. It's pretty, I mean, and you hear this, uh, whether you're you're listening to our, our customers or you're listening to our workers on the front lines talking to our customers. I mean, we're in a customer service crisis right now. Uh, it is not normal, it's not acceptable, and it's not right that people who've worked their whole lives to earn benefits should have to wait for 44 minutes, for an hour or more, in order to, to have their question answered. Um, it's not right that 10,000 people a year die waiting for their disability determinations to be made. And it's not right that we should have situations where we, uh, through no fault of the recipient, uh, find ourselves in the situation of overpayments and, uh, recovering dollars that actually put people out of their homes and, inf and inflict enormous hardship on, as you know, seniors, half of our seniors uh, uh, who uh, are, are there live entirely on Social Security. So this man's going to be president at some point. I can almost like, I can just, this man's literally going to be president at some point in the United States. I understand he's got a Democrat label to him. I understand a lot of people don't like that. Um, I personally, what I think is going to happen, you know, aside from political stuff, what I just think metrically from like an actuarial standpoint, I feel like you're going to have basically Trump essentially getting in for the next role and that's going to kick him out. And then he's going to run for president after Trump finishes his thing in which people will, you know, do the, we will wobble, you know, that pendulum swinging. I think he's probably going to be looking at a presidential run at that point, because to be honest with you, this is just too much. This is too approachable of a human being. This is, this is what you would expect from what America is going to want after Trump is in for four years. This is probably where the pendulum will go. Anyway, listen to his uh, voice, the intonation. Line is, look, our top customer service priorities for the year are to reduce the call times on the 800 number, to reduce the time to the determination of disabilities, both the initials and the appeals, and finally, to address the injustice we do to people because Ooh, of overpayments Jesus. and underpayment. You would never get a regular lawyer in that position saying, correcting the injustice we do to people. You would never get an admission of guilt from a traditional lawyer working in the government. You would never get that. But yeah, he just said that. I... That uh, uh, we're not their fault. Uh, those are our top priorities. And, and how we do that will be a hundred or a thousand different ways if we continue to call the huddles, you know, run plays, measure yardage, and, uh, and make those situations better. Not once a year. But, but every every day, every two weeks. And Commissioner, let's talk about the two weeks. So the priorities that you just laid out for everybody, these aren't... Okay, so what's weird is that when I listen to his voice, my brain slows down, which is a sign that he's a good speech person. I think the ultimate speech person, the best 
people giving speeches. I think Clinton was good at speeches. I think Obama was good at speeches. They weren't great at doing what they said they were going to do in speeches. Obama was terrible at that. Trump was the opposite. Trump was mediocre at speeches, but he did exactly what he said he was going to do. This guy is doing what he said he's going to do. He slows it down and you feel comfortable while listening to him. That's interesting. I, I don't have an answer or whatever. I just, I'm just noticing these things. Points alone. These aren't just bullets on a page. These are our actionable issues that the agency needs to address. And you've implemented a process with this two-week cadence that you just referred to, and it's called security stat. Would you tell us a bit about that? At the, at the risk of uh, going too much uh, ship in the bottle, uh, it had um, what I learned as, as mayor and what I learned as governor and what, what I was able to do with dedicated people around me in both of those situations was to break us out of the notion that government is something we do annually at the budget process. We set a goal to make things better by next year's budget and everything's inputs, 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 usually of money. And rarely do we look at what is going to be the output for the people we serve every two weeks. Uh, the good news about our agency is, man, we collect a lot of data. We have a lot of measures of, you know, work years, workflows, uh, you know, uh, FO1, FO2 processing times. <laughs> we, uh, we measure a lot of stuff. Uh, in the past, though, we have usually measured it uh, understandably from the ground up in distinct silos of the operation, but rarely do we get them to the center of the organization where the various deputy commissioners, uh, head of the office of you know legal counsel, head of policy, head of operations, head of IT, can look at that latest emerging reality of how we're doing what we're doing and, and, and start to ask the questions that take us to What's the root cause of that problem? What percentage of that problem, in this case, I'm talking about the 800 number, are people that are being driven to the 800 number because the notices we send out are gibberish and nobody can make sense of them. Good so point. Those are the things we unpack every on a two-week cadence in security stat. It's arranged in a somewhat, you know, in a more collaborative fashion than sort of <laughs> the long Adams family in conference tables that are uh, the norm in this agency. Instead, we're all facing one another. We all know we're going to be there uh, at, at the most. I don't know. Okay, so one of the things I gauge is, you know, a person with some intelligence, obviously, is where he's at on the normal scale of intellect, right? And I'm not sure if he's a hyper bright person playing it down or culturally he grew up and that's his diction syntax, his, you know, logistics when it comes to communication. I feel like he's bringing it down from where his brain is actually at because there's no way that it, let's be fair here. If he's creating this giant analytical system an actuarial system on what these SSA employees are doing and how they could do it better, engaging them, then this country folk guy is not Dale, the farmer hanging out after a hard day at KFC rolling out with a bin basket. That that's not, some something's going on here most in two weeks and when you consider the fact that we have a regular rotating focus of eight different topics every two weeks you know uh, oftentimes we see each other there and in four different after iterations every single week in terms of people like myself or uh dustin brown carolyn colvin our head of it head of budget um so security stat is nothing less than the latest evolution of how this agency uses the latest data and technology to better serve customers. But we're doing it at a time when through no fault of this, of the men and women of this agency, Congress has restricted our funding to a point where we have the fewest number of employees that we've had in 20 or 30 years while also having a rising number of beneficiaries so uh now he's got to be careful there because remember if he bitches about congress it's also a sign of president biden's overall presidency as you know um basically congress was not really looking to 
fund better the SSA. And because inflation was out of control, the SSA can't afford to hire more people. So they put a hiring freeze and they're basically at 55,000 employees. They're supposed to be at 90 to 95,000 employees to actually work properly. So they either have to do what Elon did, fire a bunch of stuff that doesn't do what it's supposed to, make it a slim, you know, running machine. Well, it's already slim, but just make it run better. Or they have to get a hell of a lot more funding to go ahead and hire a significantly larger amount of people. Because remember, at the end of the day, payroll, paying the employees is usually the largest expense for a company. But, but as in most things in life, it's not about just convincing Congress to give us more funding or just improving our own operations and effectiveness. It's a both and situation. We have to do both. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, so that's what security stat is about. Some of the some of the problems we uncover, some of the solution sets we bring forward, and usually it's not just one component. It's usually three components that have to do three different things in order to remove any one barrier. Uh, some of those are just base singles. But you know what, Jeff? If you put enough people on base, you start scoring home runs. You start driving in runs. And so, so that's what we're doing. A lot of bunt singles, a lot of things that we might look at as, well, that's just an incremental change. But across the scale of that, this agency, that can result in a lot of, you know, uh, uh, a lot of saved hours, a lot of efficiencies. Uh, that can also reduce the demoralization that our overworked employees are experiencing when they see that, ah, somebody finally listened. They're not making me do this sort of rote idiot work 39 times on an SI. Damn, you would never hear commissioners say rote idiot work normally. That, that was a bold wake-up statement. He's not wrong. He's completely right. A lot of the buttons in the SSA system for processing specifically disability applications or SSI applications have a lot of idiot buttons that need to be simplified into just one simple get or done button. So that that is true. That is very true. But you would never hear him. You would never hear somebody normally say that in that position. That is interesting. That is very interesting application to say no i don't have money no i don't have a checking account no i don't have a savings account instead it's a note all button you might think that's not a big deal it's just a note all button but if you're somebody that has to do that mindless work every day and it takes you from the more human work of serving a person you know it's a little thing but to know that headquarters is again listening and acting and acting in a two-week cadence um, uh, it's important. And that's, I think there's a lot of promise in this security stat process because this agency, unlike the last two big organizations I led, the city of Baltimore or the state of Maryland, this agency already has an 88-year proud history of collecting a lot of data. Now we need to act on it in a more timely way. And we can, and we will, and we are. This is fantastic. And, and, the only thing scripted about this is the director of communications, which my brain just kind of turns off when he starts because I know he's just going to do another lineup. But none of that stuff from Martin O'Malley was like scripted, scripted other than maybe bullet points knowing ahead of time he's going to hit these things because you would never, ever hear a commissioner push like terminology like that. And that's interesting. He circled back because he knew he probably went too far with that. And he's like the humanistic humanistic, uh, you know, part of drawing together, you know, people helping people. He's not wrong, right? He's not wrong about that. People helping people makes people want to work at the job, makes people want to work at the SSA, get a low pay, you know, people working with people, they feel good. So it counters the whole low pay thing. So he's not wrong. He's not wrong. And these ideas, these improvements that you're talking about, Commissioner, these are coming from employees. All the best ideas, Jeff, in my experience, always come from the people that are already doing the work. The problem is, in most organizations, we so overschedule leaders in the center of these big organizations to give speeches, to do, go do this, go do that, sit in headquarters and receive 10 more one-hour briefings, that we create a disconnection between the people that have the authority to do something about the challenges uh, out in the field uh, with customers and, um, you know, the workers that are seeing the inefficiencies, that are seeing how we can do better. So we're on a constant mission here to... 
uh, learn to gather from people, our employees who are serving customers, the things we can do right away to improve customer service and outcomes for people, to reduce overpayments, to reduce the call time, uh, the wait time on the 800 number, to speed uh, accurate determinations of disability. This is great. And and these all add up. You used the term base hits, Commissioner. So not all of these necessarily are going to have the biggest impact in one swing, right, using that home run analogy. But these matter. These add up. Some of these are going to be immediately realized by our customers who depend on us. Some of them help our employees, but they but helping our employees helps the public. It'll, they all go together. I mean, you cannot, even the you know, people that have degrees in you know, customer-centered design and, you know, customer experience. And I, I laugh only because it becomes a little more wonky than it needs to be. The common sense is you are not going to have satisfied customers if you have miserable and overworked employees. Whoa. Whoa. And they both go together. Holy shit. <laughs> I got this man is not doing things that a traditional commissioner would say. It's again not wrong. Again, not wrong, but oh my. You just would not expect that. I just I'm 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 sitting here quiet for the most part because I just a lot of things he's doing are not they're not what you normally get. It's just it's odd. It's very odd. Where it's part of uh it's part and it's it's all part of the same system. We're a big human resource organization that is serving a another large human resource uh, called the United States of America. We the people. In order to do better by our customers, we also have to listen more and do better by He's saying all these Republican things. We the people, freedom. But he's saying all these re- it's just weird. It's just, a lot of bells are ringing in my head like, hey, that's Trump's line. You're stealing Trump's line. What the hell? You know what I mean? It's just, it's odd, right? I mean, it's. By our it's, employees. And when I say we, I don't mean exclusively people inside this headquarters building, though we have an enormous responsibility that we need to live up to, too. But Congress needs to live up to its responsibility. We operate on a little less this year than 1% of what our, our annual benefits are that we pay out. So we pay out about uh, $1.4 trillion in uh, benefits, and we do all of that with an administrative overhead of less than 1%. You won't find another insurance company in the United States of America, and this is social insurance, different, but uh, you won't find another insurance company in America that has that ratio of just 1% overhead to the benefits that they they pay out. And that's even before you get to the notion of how we account for all of the, you know, uh, premiums, if you will, that are being paid in by people's FICA. And Commissioner, I know you're looking forward to coming back joining us again for future episodes of SSA Talks. Any final thought you'd like to share with our listeners today? Sure. I, I, I guess the final thought is this, Jeff, that um, we, um, uh, the Social Security for 88 years of its history has really done, for the most part, a remarkable job of getting the right amount to the right person at the right time. I mean, if you've gone SS on, S, on uh, SSA.gov, set up your own account, it is amazing that, that uh, this organization has kept track of all of those little percentages <clears throat> that have come out of our paychecks since we were little kids in order to calculate what our benefit will be when we reach retirement or, God forbid, should we become uh, so disabled that we cannot work. Um, so that's a that's a proud history. It's an important mission. It is the most important work I think that we do uh, in the continental United States. And uh, I'm just honored to be able to be a part of that and to be able to better serve the men and women who are on the front line serving our customers. Uh, these are going to be really uh, uh, really important months. These months ahead, 
Some of the things we do will be incremental. Some of them will be bold. Ultimately, the sum total of those things, I believe, will be transformational. And I hope our employees hang in there because uh, night is uh, darkest just before the dawn. Commissioner, thank you for joining me today. Is that fucking Batman? Did he just quote Batman? No, no. Batman quoted some. What? Where does that come? I've, what is that? It's dark, darkest before the dawn. That's in a Batman thing. Hold on. Starts for this metaphor that means blah blah blah. Where's that from? Uh, English theologian historian Thomas Fuller. Okay, cool. But Batman, <laughs> Batman did that too. All right, and I think made it more famous for my gym. What is? Oh my god! I just he and he did. Did you catch that? He said, "I hope the employees hang in there." I don't know what to say. This is, if Trump did it, that's how he would do it. Except it would he would use like you know more adjectives like huge. I don't get it. This this guy's supposed to be the protege of Biden, although you know Biden's kind of out of it. So, God, I, all right. What, what do you what do you guys think? What, what do you, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, I, I like it's, I'm surprised. I'm I'm, in a, I'm staying in a shock at this point because it just it's not what I expected. I'm actually hearing it as you guys are hearing it. And so I'm having a hard time formulating where I'm at on this thing. What, what do you think? Uh, no Churchill, maybe rhetoric. Did you hear that the money from childhood? Yeah, I mean, remember, you know, childhood could mean up to essentially 18 and people start working before, you know, yada, yada, or if they're still in school, 22. Uh, let's see. Uh <laughs> Fawn said Biden is eating ice cream in the basement. Potentially, while listening to this, this is interesting. This is a man that could be president. I feel like it's going to go Trump. Trump will kick him out because what Biden did to Commissioner Saul, and then he'll come back and be a contender for the next election for president. Wow. Yeah, April, Walter, movie, The Dark Knight. I was going to say, I was going to say, we got some Batman people in here. That's good. Um, I don't know... I don't know what to say, but that was more Trump than Biden. And at the end of the day, he's already achieved many of the things he was talking about. So he's doing this SSA talks after being in office for like four-ish months. And he's already achieved fixing some of the beginning steps of a lot of these problems. So what's interesting is that he chose now to do it, but at the rate he was giving us information that did not seem super hyper prepared and typed out. It almost felt like this was just like a, a relaxed fireside chat and not a state of the union, which is essentially what this thing was a state of the agency and the current standing. This is interesting. This is groundbreaking. This is completely different from commissioner Saul, completely different from commissioner Kijikazi, completely different from what I would expect. I don't know what to say. I'm confused. Like literally I might do a video where I just summarize what he said and then explain my thoughts on it, but I don't even know what to say. This guy could sell tickets at a show. This guy could stand in front of a pulpit. This guy could stand in front of anything and give a speech and people would listen. He has the thing that Biden does, that old grandpa talk thing, except Biden has the whole, his brain goes all over the place and out comes a stream of words that don't make sense. He doesn't have that, but he has that grandpa effect to him. I don't know. I don't know. I am kind of speechless. And he's country, which I like, because that's where I come from. He didn't go super technical. He didn't go super technical. I was expecting more of that. Hmm. All right, so here's the deal. We have one last video. We're only going to go live for about 30 minutes to answer questions. I realize it's 1.03 a.m. I have to wake up and be on calls, do stuff tomorrow for the law firm. So I'm going to end this video shortly. Please remember to like. Please remember to subscribe. Go to Google. Type in Disability Resolution PA or Disability Resolution Law Firm or Disability Resolution Florida. Throw some stars up on the review there. 
Uh, also, please remember, don't call the firm during the nine to five with a quick question. If you already have benefits, that's the time for people who need help getting benefits. Uh, when we do the live, use a fake name. Remember, if you want more than five to seven minutes for me to answer a question, buy the one hour and then I can give you a full hour. We put you on the hearing calendar. I will catch you guys at the next video. Give me about 10 minutes. I got to drink something, get some, uh, get some caffeine in me, and then we should be good to go. I'll see you all soon. And that was very interesting. Very interesting. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye.